inflation is gone okay inflation is basically just decimated evaporated eviscerated just gone okay we're gonna be talking about the cpi i'm sorry i'm dressed like this i just came back from the gym okay so uh i'm gonna be going through the cpi report so that you guys can actually understand what's going on with the whole entire thing okay so uh a quick one a quick one okay so uh cpi month over month it actually went up by 0.2 percent the street consensus was actually at about 0.3 percent which is why this was a beat okay market was loving it yesterday market was basically just rallying upwards because they think that Inflation is is effectively gone. Okay, index for shelter was the largest contributor. As we have already spoke about this for the past four to five reports, we know for a fact that index for shelter is going to consistently be the largest contributor to all the CPI effectively. Okay, so we are most likely still going to be having I think three more, three more of shelter persisting prices before we actually see a. Uh, deep in uh, shelter and basically that then we are completely out of the inflation um, worry right now you can see that also uh, index for motor uh, motor uh, vehicle insurance is also contributing a little bit okay but anyway food index increased 0.1 percent in june again i think that this is um okay i would say concerning but the thing is that it is uh, it is concerning to a certain extent of course you can actually say that 0.1 percent if you analyze it it's about 1.2 percent Per year, it's not going to be crazy. 1.2% per year is actually all right for food prices. But at the same time, you're also talking about the fact that none of these prices have actually went down. We have only had severe disinflation happening, not deflation happening. Which means that prices are still pretty, pretty high. And prices are not going to be coming down anytime soon. Because prices uh, that is already sky high, right now, all they're telling you is that it is not increasing in price anymore. They're not telling you that, oh, we're going to be going down in price. It's just not going to be increasing in price. Okay, so that's why. That's why it is a little bit concerning. Let me see if I can zoom this in for you guys. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, I think it's a lot better. Okay, cool. Now, let's see. Um, the food index, well, which is like 0.1%, after increasing 0.2% in the previous month. And also, in the index for food at the same time, um, the last time that we actually had... Um, deflation in our food index was actually never okay or oh, not, not never it was actually before the whole entire hyperinflation situation happened uh, ever since that we had this whole hyperinflation uh, trend happening we have not had a single negative 0.1 percent happening the closest that we had was zero percent i think three months ago for the cpi and then afterwards it kind of basically jumped back up with the 0 0.1 0 0.2 now back to 0 0.1 again okay so you can clearly tell that prices of food is not going down so, of course, you can say that the one of the huge reasons why the prices of food is not going down is also because demand is not going to be wavering. Okay, demand for food, you cannot really tell people to not eat. Okay, so demand for food effectively will always be there. If anything, it will only go up. Okay, so food-wise, I can see why the demand is not going to be moving as much. And supply, they cannot really oversupply because it's going to be a very, very dangerous uh, route down the road if they were to oversupply for food as well okay so um let's talk about core okay we which means less food and energy rose by 0.2 percent again right smack on the street consensus because they were expecting 0.2 percent for the core inflation as well this is the smallest one month increase in the index since august of 2021 of course this line over here this line alone uh, let me see if i can like change the color of it can i Oh, here it is. Okay, this purple line alone, okay, this purple line alone basically means that the market is going to be rallying pretty hard because whatever the market was actually, uh, you know, just throwing on top of this uh, bad economy, I was trying to say hyperinflation was a huge thing. Inflation basically went down. Now, that the next argument that a lot of us were actually fighting for was saying that core inflation is very, very high. Because if your core inflation is high, effectively food and energy, which is a standardized demand where we cannot really change the demand as much because people who need to eat, people who need to work, people who need to use machinery, people who need to drive, people who need energy in general, food in general, you cannot really change the demand as much, okay? Especially in a working economy. But if you're talking about every other thing, which is why we actually look at core inflation. But if core inflation is also posting a such a small increase month over month, then basically people are saying that you guys don't really have any more argument to come on with. Okay, there's no other argument that you can actually bring forth to say that, you know, inflation is going to be destroying this whole entire economy. 
But I, which is why uh, that, that's kind of like the the argument that the bears are having. Similarly, of course, I, I do want to say so. Uh, it's not a good time for me to bring this up as well. But I am quite bearish on the economy. And this report doesn't really help me a lot. Because the thing is that my, my portfolio that is going against the market is definitely going to be biting the dust a little bit. But of course, uh, ultimately, uh, I still have I have multiple portfolios. I do I still have um, bullish uh, portfolios. Just that I'm more so on the short side rather than the long side. So of course, this is not really a good uh, report for me. But I'm still gonna be going through this whole report without any any biasness or as much or as less biasness as I can through this whole entire report because I just want to bring you guys the facts. I just want to give you guys the value as I can. Okay, so the index for airline fares, communication, used cars and trucks, household furnishing and operations were among those that decreased over the month. Okay, airline fares did that it decreased was actually a huge thing because a lot of people were expecting airline fares to actually continuously go up. I'll actually go through with you uh, in the chart later on where we can actually talk about the airline fares in more details. Okay, but basically we can look at the chart over here. You can see, like I told you before, chances are by the time we hit uh, the July reading, which means it's next month, we are going to see a huge change in our entire CPI because next month, chances are we're not going to be hitting 1.2%, for example, which means that basically next month or even the month after, okay, which is like when we get the August reading in September, chances are we're going to be getting less than 2% inflation as it is. And that will be alongside with what the Federal Reserve has been trying to aim for, which is the long-term wise, 2% inflation year over year. So of course, right now we are really getting there as much as we can. Over here now, we have to look at all the different um, numbers that actually happened in June. Okay, so for over here, I'm going to just go through uh, immediately with you guys over here. These are the negatives, okay? You can tell that the negatives over here, the negative is a part of your energy. Is part of your gas services, is part of your commodities, is part of your used cars and trucks. All these are actually pretty, pretty important because if you actually look at your uh, unadjusted 12 months, okay, energy prices actually went down 16.7%. Of course, you're also taking into consideration that one year ago, we are also still fighting in the Ukraine war, war in quite a high level. So for us to actually have a one year of change, for us to see that the Russia-Ukraine situation actually waned downwards, a 16.7% downwards was a pretty good thing. Okay, same thing for gas services, alongside with energy services as well. So chances are we are expecting it to actually go down. Okay, and of course for new vehicles, oh uh, no, for uh, yeah, used cars and trucks, sorry. For used cars and trucks, uh, down 5.2% year over year. Pretty good. Okay, the reason why I was kind of hoping to actually see a minus in the uh, used cars and trucks as well is because we had consistent increment in inflation for the past couple of months for used cars and trucks. Finally, we are starting to see this inflation happening or in this case, deflation happening uh, to a very certain extent. Uh, so yeah, it's nice to see uh, used cars and trucks actually go back down a little bit. Okay, and of course, for medical care services, uh, nothing, uh, not a huge change. Uh, this was actually one of my, one of the reasons why I was actually quite bearish was because I was kind of worried that services in general, services in general, I was worried that services in general is going to be uh, going down in, uh well going up in price right now it's quite clear to see that services are not really contributing too much to inflation as it is so not too much that we should be that worried about uh shelter prices i think it is still going to be the biggest uh part of them all currently still at 0 0.4 uh the reason why 0 0.4 is going to be affecting is also considered a huge contributor to inflation is also because it holds a huge weightage in the whole entire cpi okay so let's go through this whole thing again uh, okay, rose 1%, 0.1%, I'm pretty sure that we all know about this already. Uh, meat, poultry, fish, eggs, decrease, coal, uh, food from home, rose, pretty bad. Uh, hold on, let me just change this back to orange uh, so that, can I, can I, yeah, okay, sure. That, that, that works, that works, okay, that works. Uh, okay, index for food, rose 7.7%, 7, 7 uh, food service meals rose 6.2% over the last 12 months. Uh, energy index rose 0.6% in June after falling 3.6% in May. Same thing, 
uh, energy prices actually going back up is not really that big of a concern right now people are thinking that the wti is not even going to be hitting 90 dollars anytime soon so energy prices is severely trying to um it's severely going down actually it's not really that big of an issue we're not worried about inflation hitting the energy uh prices as much uh think about it where it was a year and three months a year and four months ago where we were so worried about gas prices energy prices going through the roof people were buying oil at like in copious amount people were actually getting through the roof with all these different oil prices and such now everything is starting to stabilize downwards Okay, all item less food and energy, which is your core inflation, uh, rose 0.2%. Shelter index increased 0.4% more normal after rising 0.6% in May. Similarly, like I told you uh, previously, which is chances are we're going to be expecting three more months or maybe maximum four more months or five more months of increment in your uh, shelter index before we start to see uh, massive disinflation happening because the way they actually calculate uh, shelter prices in the CPI is slightly different. They actually count it by per year, which means that it's kind of also kind of makes sense because every single time you do sign a rental agreement, a tenancy agreement, or you buy a house, all these different prices actually do shift in a year basis. Okay, so for you to actually see the price actually severely going down or severely going up, there's going to be a huge lagging factor behind it. And you're going to be probably only going to be seeing it 12 to 15 months afterwards. Okay, so right now we are expecting it to come in the next three to five months. Hopefully in the next three to five months, we'll see this inflation happening in the shelter index. And hopefully we can start to see deflation as well. Okay, uh, the index for rent rose 0.5% in June and index for owners equivalent rent increased 0.4% over the month. Yeah, again, like I said, it's nothing too uh, concerning. It's still part of what everyone is thinking about. Okay, several index uh, declined in June, led, <coughs> excuse me, led by Airline Fest Index, which fell 8.1% over the month following decline in April and May. This is one of the huge factors. I, I was not expecting Airline Fest to be dropping that much, but for Airline Fest to actually drop 8.1% is actually quite incredible, okay? And one of the reasons why it was actually cited that there would be uh, prices would also be going down as well is also because for airlines wise, because yesterday I was going through the Delta uh, Airlines earnings, they also say that they are expecting prices to actually go down a little bit. They are expecting their profit to actually go up. Uh, the reason being is because fuel prices are going to be going down as well. And when fuel prices go down, that means that they can actually, uh, okay, wow, you think about it this way, for airlines wise, most of their um, cost actually goes to fuel and labor costs. There's not much of material cost in, uh, in, the, in that kind of thing other than fuel because everything else is already kind of paid for. Okay, so when it comes down to labor costs and then you have to count fuel, then it comes down to like the amount of time that they actually fly. Okay, so for them to actually um, drop the prices or well, inflation basically drop by 8.1%. Uh, and also with what Delta Airlines have been talking about, we are also expecting them to continue to drop in the next couple of months as well so that's going to be quite interesting for us to actually see uh, how airline fest is gonna fare <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah but anyway uh medical care index was unchanged uh again this was the smoking gun that i was a little bit more worried about which is uh services in general so your med medical services your insurance services your motor uh, motor uh services all these different services i was worried that they would actually go up in price but clearly it is staying unchanged and i do not see a clear path for them to actually have a huge increment either okay so uh let's go down to the charts where we see all the numbers and switch uh okay okay a actually you can see this okay i think this is quite important as well it was just the relative uh importance um for may okay but it doesn't really matter you can kind of just see uh, what was the weightage of how they actually get to 100%? Okay, food is holding 13%, 13 fuel is at about 6%. Okay, so your all, all items, less food and energy, you can tell that it's 80%, which is why we actually do need to care about core prices a lot. Okay, commodities at 21, services, less energy uh, at 58, shelter at 34, uh, equivalent uh, owner's equivalent rent. Uh, at 25 and the rest is basically quite negligible okay which is why i said that you know if you were to include both of the rent uh, the, the shelter price uh, the shelter index which means you're looking at uh shelter plus 
owner equivalent rent, you're looking at over 50%. Okay, for this whole entire CPI, you're looking at over 50%, which is why shelter prices are going to be huge. Why we are looking at this as, uh, as, such an, as such an important thing. Okay, we're not looking at food prices as much. I will only touch and go on food prices. But for shelter prices, we have to talk a lot more about it because that is where the main contributor to inflation or deflation may actually come okay by the way uh, i think i don't want to talk too much about a report as such because i think that uh, most of you all probably have already read it people who are super, super interested in it have read it or you probably have already um go uh, gone through it or watch the mainstream media cover it as well okay so now basically um cpi turns out to be pretty good uh but i do want to uh state this okay so uh again yeah, i'm not sure if this is going to be biased or not but CPI does not really dictate how the economy goes. How the economy goes dictates how CPI will be. That's kind of how it works. But the thing is that what would dictate the economy is the FOMC. Okay, so I don't know if this is just me having hopium in my body. But the thing is that we still do not know what the Federal Reserve are going to be doing. Okay, with this kind of report... They can actually could, could go both ways, okay? Of course, the, the more possible way or the more plausible way for them to actually go for would be to actually pause rates, okay? When they actually pause rates, what that actually means is they're just saying that, okay, we think that we finally are am able to um, tame inflation to a certain extent, so we do not have to increase rates anymore. And because we don't have to increase rates anymore, it's fine, okay? Rates can stay the same. Inflation is going to be going down. And then eventually, okay, in the next six to seven months, we can start to cut rates again. That's kind of where they would most likely be uh, going towards. But the other argument that one can actually uh, fight for would be that the economy is so strong at the moment, okay? Despite having over 5% in our interest rates, the whole entire economy is still tanking. The inflation is still tanking. And then we can still handle it. Okay, so why not you just increase rates a little bit more and bring prices actually down? We actually want to see deflation instead of just disinflation. We don't want to just see inflation at 2%. How about we see inflation go to negative 2% for about two years for us to actually get back the prices that we actually had in 2019. And then you can continue to get back to your normal rates again. Maybe that's kind of how, how that should go. Okay, but of course... Again, I think this is a lot of hopium because the thing is that when, when you actually get into deflation, similarly to inflation, it's going to be very hard for you to control. You cannot just say that you want to just cut rates, you, you want to just uh, increase rates, you want to just you know give free money to the economy to hopefully boost the economy. It's not going to be that easy. Uh, I would think that inflation is easier to fight than deflation. Deflation is going to be way harder to fight because inflation basically mean, means that you have a high demand on things. And then all you have to do is just make the demand lesser. But the thing is that if a demand is not there, you cannot just create demand. It's a lot harder that way. But yeah, anyway, um, which is why let's hope to see what the Fed is going to be doing. I'm not sure myself. Of course, according to the last time that we actually had Jerome Powell come out to talk about it, he's expecting and he was talking about rate hikes. We're expecting two more rate hikes in the year. Uh, we're not sure if that's going to be happening anytime soon. Most likely, maybe in this uh, in this upcoming meeting as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, stay tuned for that. I would be covering all the FOMC meeting as well, be it the expectation video or the entire summary of the whole FOMC. But anyway, that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.